Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I'm taking a look at another power supply. We looked recently at the Farnell L30BT. Today I'm taking a look at its originator, the Farnell L30 stabilized voltage supply. These ran from around 1963 up until about 1969 when they were replaced with the L30A and B and the twin versions. Now this little beauty is a 30 volt 0.5 amp stabilized power supply. I think it's a little charmer this one. It's rather cute, it's small size and really simple controls. You've got your voltage range and your voltage level there. You've got your on off and your volts amps switch there for your meter. Apart from that, you've just got two terminals on the front and a really delightful looking light bulb that looks like it's come from some 1960s sci-fi set. You don't even get a current control on the front. Your current control is on the back, but still, Look at the size of that meter, that's absolutely huge. So on these, the output voltage is covered in three overlapping ranges of 10 volt increments, which you can select with the switch, with fine continuous adjustment over each range provided by a control potentiometer. So why does it have a range control switch instead of a coarse voltage control like on more modern power supplies? Well, it's because the germanium power transistors on the output can't handle a great deal of power. So the transformer has tappings for voltage ranges. So the differential between the voltage you set and the unregulated voltage on the input of the transistors is minimal, thereby limiting the power through the germanium power transistors. Old power transistors didn't have the power handling of the modern ones we have today. Let's take a look inside this one. I'm going to ESR the caps and I'm going to clean and lubricate the potentiometer that controls your voltage level. So let's get this on the new bench and have a look. So we're over on the new bench today, which gives us a little bit more room. Lovely. Now this is lovely little L30. It really doesn't need much. It's in such nice condition. I'm just going to check the caps for ESR and I've noticed the voltage pot's a tiny bit crackly, so I'm just gonna clean and lubricate it with some potentiometer cleaner. Now this model has the germanium bipolar transistors, unlike the later all silicon L30 that we looked at before. A Little bit dusty, so we'll give that a brush out. And there's our germanium power transistors there. Now that's a huge cap there. We'll have to check that one. I'm assured all is good with this power supply. It does look like it's been really well looked after. So for their time, they were pretty good. These had overload protection, which actually resets when the overload is removed. And it's got a stabilization circuit as well. So the output from the mains transformers rectified by a bridge rectifier, smoothed by a reservoir capacitor, and that provides the unstabilized DC power supply that's then fed into the stabilization circuit. You've got the current fed from the smoothing cap to a Zener diode, which gives a stable current through various resistors and stuff to a second Zener diode, giving a high order of stability. They use that as a voltage reference. Very nice. Okay, let's get the bottom plate off and have a look at the board. Again, all looks nice and clean, nice and tidy. Just gonna check these caps out to be on the safe side. It's not going to be used as an everyday power supply, this one. More for special occasions, because you've got to have a special occasion power supply. Right, let's grab my M162 and have a look. Okay, let's start with this Hunts. That's the prime suspect. Actually checks out all right, this one. Um, we've got a couple of others here to have a look at. And of course, we've got to check this big one. Thankfully, all checks out okay. Lovely. Right, let's have a look at these pots, shall we? We've got my contact PR here, which is specially designed for potentiometers, for cleaning, removing deposits and impurities, and has the correct kind of grease to lubricate them. So I'm just going to give this a good spray. Lovely. And just exercise these vigorously. Happy with that. Let's get the base plate back on. 
actually such good condition this one Let's get the screws back in the top of the case check the plug plug looks great love the brown and blue safety sleeves on the pins the side screws back in and let's give it a test shall we all right let's just plug some leads in switch on love that neon light on the front so 60s looking absolutely love it right let's get up to five volts see what we've got yeah that's not bad not bad okay and up to 10 okay fantastic now we need to change the range up to 20 there we go looking good and let's max it out 30 volts fantastic 30.27 on the meter not bad at all actually for its age right okay let's see if she draws some current so of course with this one you set your current limit on the back of the unit let's just pop a 10r resistor in just so we can check and yep there we go fantastic happy with that lovely little l30 in great condition and fully working order really makes me happy seeing this little power supply on the bench so there we go i think it's rather quaint and rather charming the farnell l30 stabilized voltage supply fantastic and as i always say you can never have too many power supplies not so much a daily driver more a sunday afternoon driver when the weather's fine and you want to take it out just for a spin hope you've enjoyed today's video taking a look at this little farnell i think it's a little cracker this one massive thanks to everyone for watching sharing liking commenting and subscribing i always massively appreciate it i'll be back soon with some more videos on test gear repairs retro gaming and electronics kits in the meantime take care and i'll see you on the next one